I learned the hard way that focusing solely on a destination makes the journey absolutely excruciating. Practicing anything is such a delicate balance because the nature of it requires that we shine a light on what we are not able to do and what we want to be able to do. So we're focusing over and over again on what we can't do in order to try to get there. So no wonder we get discouraged. We're putting all this energy onto, onto sh showing our shortcomings to ourselves uh, and hoping that someday we don't have those shortcomings. I mean, this is, however, the absolutely the secret sauce to really quality, really effective, really powerful practicing and making rapid progress. And that's highlighting your weaknesses, finding the trouble spots, finding the problems, and then filling them in, fixing them, uh, working on them, absolutely solving those issues. But of course, constantly digging for what we what those problems are, what those weaknesses are, eh, it doesn't seem like a good recipe for a happy, productive life, for self-satisfaction, for kind of a, a nurturing our well-being. So now we're kind of at a standstill, right? Because I said, oh, this is the secret sauce to good practicing. So the secret sauce to good practicing, but, you know, this dilemma of how detrimental it can be to our psyche. But here's the thing, identifying what is challenging to us in order to improve is not the problem. And wanting to improve in the first place is not the problem. And practicing is certainly not the problem. The problem is totally in why. Why, 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 why are we doing those things? Why are we practicing? Why do we want to improve? Why, therefore, are we pointing out what we suck at all the time? So a turning point for me happened when one of my professors at school, and this is, this was a, a world-renowned classical guitar player, performer, teacher, and he said something to me that helped me start to heal from that very toxic outcome-based perspective. And he said, I used to think that I practiced in order to play concerts, but the truth is I play concerts in order to practice. What he said is a simple, but such a profound illustration of what's going on internally on the inside with someone that from the outside, we look at them and, and it might look like they have some major accomplishment, some achievement, some super desirable outcome. And we look at that and we say, wow, that must, that must feel good. But what's happening internally? Absolutely falling in love with the process of practicing and learning that practice doesn't make perfect. It's more like it makes purpose. And I know that's kind of cheesy, but I like it. Practice makes purpose. And ironically, practicing purely for the meaning and fulfillment that one can get out of it leads to super quality practice that actually induces rapid progress. It's like the skills can come, like you can let them in finally when you stop grasping so hard for them. I was recently reading Anne Lamott's book called Bird by Bird. It's about writing and it's about creativity in writing. And I love stuff like that. So I'm always trying to learn from other creative people. So she tells a story about how she's teaching a creative writing class and she's offering up all this enthusiasm about the act of writing and how amazing it is and, and just her love affair with writing itself and, and trying to inspire her class. And all her enthusiasm is just met with blank stares followed by questions about how to get it published and how to get an agent. You know, she's like going off on all this, all this exciting, all, all these descriptions of how meaningful writing can be. And then they're kind of like, uh, so do you need an agent to get published? So I want to read to you a quote from that section of the book. She writes, they kind of want to write, but they really want to be published. You'll never get to where you want to be that way. I tell them there is a door we all want to walk through and writing can help you find it and open it. Writing can give you what having a baby can give you. It can get you to start paying attention, can help you to soften, can wake you up. But publishing won't do any of those things. You'll never get in that way. So that's kind of the writing example of any of our pursuits where we're looking for that outcome, that result, that thing that on the surface seems to tell the world that we've succeeded. 
But on top of all that, I would add that the likelihood of someone getting published skyrockets if they fall in love with the process of writing. And that's the way it is with every single endeavor. You can't pretend to love the process to get those results. Of course, it's not going to work that way. Actually falling in love with the process means that the true reward is in the growth that happens from any pursuit. And that love of that growth renders the very idea of a final destination totally undesirable because it would stop the growth and it would stop the thing you're actually benefiting from. Grab my chord chart. It's called Chords with Color. It's super cool. It has a bunch of theory information with the Roman numerals, the chord tones involved, extensions added. You'll see how cool it is if you want to give it a try. There's a link in the description to grab it. Thanks so much. That's it for this lesson. Take care. Happy practicing. See you next time.